So many people have been asking us, what is it that, that you and Abby do with Emmaus Ministries? And while there are many things that we do, we do counseling services. I had the opportunity to preach yesterday at Pioneer Church. If you haven't seen it yet, go over to their website or even I think our Facebook page and you'll find it there. I was really blessed to be able to, to speak there yesterday as I record this. But we're, we're going to be doing seminars and teaching others how to, how to counsel, others how to do some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about here. But we really want to bring the practicality of God in Scripture to life. And really it's driven by, if we were to put in one Scripture, it would be this. It's Romans 12.2, which says, Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we've seen, especially over the last year and a half, especially since the, the COVID uh, pandemic started, that there has been a, a need for mental health services. We've seen this for, for quite a while and there's been a neglect. But thankfully, we're starting to see this rise of recognition for the need of mental health services, especially within the church. You know, Pastor Craig Groeschel at Life Church or life.tv.church, I don't know what, what their actual stuff is, but Craig Groeschel has become a, a huge proponent, at least publicly, of mental health services which is, is great for me to hear as someone who recognizes the need for mental health services and help and maturation mentally and spiritually and emotionally all on the same level. See, as Christians, we tend to forget that we are both physical and spiritual. We have mental processes, we have spiritual processes. And Within the church, we've tended to neglect the mental and emotional as we have pushed the spiritual. As a result, we've ended up with people who, who know the Bible, who are scripturally strong, but are, are weak and struggling in practical aspects of life because we've neglected to put Christ into our spiritual, our, our emotional and physical maturation. See, for myself, and one of our, our core values with, with Emmaus is that discipleship and counseling are two sides of the same coin. Where as, as a church, as a, you know, the capital C church, we focus on building spiritual maturity, getting scripture in, helping you know that you're a new creation in Christ that you're no longer a slave to sin. We get the stuff out there, but what, what we have failed to do is address the emotional and physical toll and mental toll that living apart from Christ has taken. See, as we walk apart from Christ, we learn how to walk apart from Christ. And we come into this life, Christ gives us a new life, gives us a, a new standing as, as children, of the Most High God with an eternal life ahead of us, but we still need to learn and relearn how to live as citizens of heaven, no longer slaves to sin. And this is where we have struggled as a church because we've neglected to, to speak on this. An example I use quite frequently is you have someone who has father issues. Their dad may have left. They may have been abandoned. Um, they may have never known their dad. He may have been abusive. Either way, that earthly father, they view their heavenly father through. So they might come and hear a message that Jesus died for them, that he rose again, that he's given them eternal life. They did this for them for the remission of their sins. However, when called to recognizing that God is a loving God that gave his son, and that has that same love for them, that, that he would give his son for relationship with them, they struggle to, to grasp that spiritual truth because the emotional toll of their father not being there. 
They said, my earthly father, who I can see and touch and interact with in a tangible way, treats me like this. Then that means my heavenly father, who I can't see, can't touch, isn't tangible in the way my earthly father was. Then he must be the same way. So I can't grasp it. So as pastors, as counselors, we need to address those issues practically that were caused by the sin in walking apart from Christ. If they are, if we're going to bring people into the kingdom and have them be as successful and strong as Jesus intends them to be when he went to the cross. See, the renewing of the mind that is talked about here in Romans is a progress. See, we, we come to salvation, we get the salvation, we get this amazing gift. We now need to learn how to operate in that gift, how to walk in that gift. It's kind of like you, you get some amazing gift for, uh, for Christmas. A remote control car or a, a Lego set or a computer. You have to learn, there's a process in learning how to use that gift. You might think you know how to operate that gift, and a computer's a great example of this. How often do we have a computer and we use it for 10 years, never realizing half of what we could have done with it because we, we never learned the other aspects. And as Christians, we miss out on so much of our spiritual life and what God has for us because we don't address these issues. We don't go through that renewing of the mind. We settle for, and we allow others to settle for, less than what God has for them. And that is what we try to, to accomplish and try to do. Try to build up the strength of the believer by building the practicality of what God is saying in Scripture to match the spirituality that we're building within the church. See, we end up being weak because our our, our emotions and our and our mindset doesn't match our spirituality. And so we end up being weak. So you see, what I say when uh, counseling and discipleship are two sides of the same coin, we look at discipleship as spiritual maturity. But we look at counseling as that emotional and mental maturity. You do them together. Well, what's, what's really cool about this is both of them are very practical. God doesn't say anything in scripture for no just to say it there's a practical reason to it and our our emotions and our our mental health is practical as well our emotions tell us are we happy are we sad is this good is this bad should i run should i stay do i hug do i punch you know it, it's very practical you know our, our our mental process tells us i i've, I've learned this I know because I've, I've done this in the past, this is what I do. So you can see if, if our mental processes are um, tell us and, and inform our decisions, how if we don't relearn those processes, we'll continue to make the same decisions we made in the past, but they will be wrong decisions because they don't match where we're trying to go anymore. As, king, as citizens of heaven, our decisions are on the path of Christ, where citizens of of the earth, as, as those that are citizens of the state of sin, our decisions, which were dictated by that, no longer point to the same direction that we're trying to get. So, with us and what we do, we're trying to align those two into one uh, one direction. And not the band. You know, we've seen that what lack of focus has done within the church. We've seen that many are missing spiritual truths because they're not getting the mental help they need. We've seen pastors who are overwhelmed, know, know scripture, know the truth of scripture, but can't grasp it because they've been overwhelmed with mental health issues. They've been overwhelmed with their emotions. They haven't been given the practical side of, of renewing your mind. I mean, it, it says it right here, that God will transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
then you will learn to know God's will. See, the wording used here is progressive. He's changing the way you think. Not he has changed the way you think. So there's a process in this that we have missed within the church. And this is what we are trying to fix. So if you're a church that's watching this, that, I, that we've spoken to you and, and we want to work with you, this is what we're trying to help you do. This is a progress or a progression of from where you are to where you want to be, where your congregation is to where you want it to be. That this is training up the believer. That this is fulfilling the Great Commission on the practical side. When, he, when Jesus says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's a progress. It's a, I keep saying progress. It's a process. And we need to be focusing on the practical the physical, the emotional, the mental, as much as we're focusing on the uh, the spiritual. So this is just a little bit of kind of an overview of the heart of what we do. We've recognized that we're not doing a good job making disciples. We're not doing a good job of really impacting the world because we're not really fully impacting our churches because we're not fully addressing the person of our of our believers you know if jesus was was physical emotional spiritual relational psychological then we need to be maturing in those same ways not just saying oh a disciple is someone who grows spiritually because that is only a part of it and we're only going to be partially strong we're not going to be able to stand against the physical and emotional attacks the way that we would if we focused on that the same way we do spiritually See, mental health and emotional wellness are a spiritual discipline just as much as reading scripture or praying. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created mankind. We need to treat our physicality the same way we do our spirituality. So this is what we are asking. If, if you're a church and you're watching this, we want to partner with you. If you go to a church... Talk to your pastors. We want to work with you. If you're just a believer, heck, if you're even not a believer and you're watching this and you say, my mental health is struggling, reach out to us. Send us an email. Contact us on Facebook. Go to our website. Reach out to us. If you're a believer and you're saying, you know what? I, I, I know scripture. I recognize that the Christ died for me. I've done all that, but something is still missing. Reach out. Let's talk. We want to fill that gap. And this is what we do. We want to help bridge the gap. Meet those needs. Increase discipleship. We don't want to plant a church ourselves because we want to work with the churches we have to make the churches we have now as strong as they can possibly be. Why plant another church when we have churches that are struggling? We want to help build the believers, build the church. We want you to be as strong as you can be. So I thank you for listening. I hope this has sparked something for you. I hope you're going to reach out to us. And if you don't reach out, share this with somebody else who might need to hear it. Maybe they need this help. You know, we, we're here. We're waiting. We're listening. This is what God has called us to do. So I look forward to hearing from you, speaking with you, working alongside you. And I hope as, as this finds you, that if you need help, you reach out. If not, I hope you're blessed. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. So thank you for listening. And hopefully we speak in the future.